Welcome back, everyone. I'm excited today to announce the first ever lesson that's long form, and we're going for Mechanical Design 101, the process itself, from getting customer requirements on the front end, turning those into design specs, bringing that design into fruition, testing it out, seeing if it solves the problem, iterating until you get to the proper solution and everything in between. Ready? Let's check it out. The first thing to understand about design is that real problems never fit nicely into a box. They resist being compartmentalized. However, in design, this is exactly what we must do. We must come up with a specific, very specific plan to satisfy specific needs. So the box has to be drawn so we can create our well-oiled machine. Because even though there's a bottomless pit of analyses and associations with mechanical engineering that we'll find in well-oiled machines that we could look further at in well-oiled machines. The thing about well-oiled machines is that we figured out how to build them by coming up with specific needs and problems and solving them. When we did that across various types of devices, from heating, ventilation, and air, to internal combustion engines, to jet engines, each of these things has sort of embraced the word design for themselves. And all of this is mechanical design because it all sets out, okay, what's the need? What are the requirements? And then we go forth and we say, okay, what are the specifications? So what's the difference between requirements and specifications? This is an essential point. Okay, let's say marketing comes to you. And they tell you, you know, we have a new customer requirement for one of our products. And so, you know, you're in engineering and you're like, all right, let me work with you to see if we can come up with a way that we can satisfy what the customer wants by changing the design of the product. And so this is where marketing sort of throws the ball over the proverbial fence here. And engineering goes back and, you know, you, you go back, you talk to your team and you say, hey, listen, we need some specs for this new product. We need specs for the product page. And the specs are not the same as the requirements. In fact, we might have to do a little R&D. might have to iterate back and forth with marketing. You tell me, can we even do this? Is this customer requirement legit? Thus begins the process of mechanical design. The first hard part is marketing actually working with the customer to come up with design requirements. But assuming that that's not within your purview because you're doing mechanical design here, you're concerned with the conversion of those customer requirements into design specs. If you can do that, now within that design space, you have the ability, the ability to conceptualize and to really perform that alchemy and make that magic happen. Create that design. This is where the idea, the invention comes to fruition after you finally have the design specs and you're able to sit down in your own designer's mind. You can come up with it. Now, once you have it, then the entire sometimes very 
long process of analysis and optimization occurs before you obviously have to test it in real life and prove that it solves the problem and you can show it to the customer and they're like yeah that looks great of course most of the time it doesn't go this smoothly you're constantly backtracking at each step two steps forward one step back there always seems to be uh, uncertainty that you go back and revisit why are we even solving this problem to begin with is there an easier way should I rethink the synthesis and sometimes even when you go to prove it works you realize it doesn't but eventually after you iterate enough times you will have your mechanical design and that's how we do it